Hello friends, I took a brutal, seemingly okay pay package delivery on Uber Eats and I wanted to share this with you because are these kind of orders brutal, good paying? It was 35 miles. I'm in Ventura County, that's north of Los Angeles. This order took me so deep into Los Angeles, I thought I was going to cry with all the traffic, homelessness. Ah, it was brutal. Let me share some details with you. When I accepted it, I just saw it was long distance delivery. I did see $36 and I thought, you know what? It's the middle of the day. Let's just do it. And so it only took me nine minutes to get to the business and they made signs there. And I went inside, there were two boxes. The worker was very kind. He told me that I could just grab them at the top of the handles where all the wood poles are and that would be okay. And then he helped me carry them to my car. So I carefully laid them behind the passenger seat in the back there and made sure it wouldn't move around. I was already regretting knowing that I was gonna be headed deep into Los Angeles. And let me tell you, if you're from Los Angeles or other really densely populated areas, then you probably know that I'm just whining and I should toughen up. But let me tell you, going into Los Angeles virtually any time except at night is just brutal. There's always going to be traffic. And as an independent contractor, we always want to make money as quickly as possible. Time is money. So if we're stuck in traffic or just waiting, we're actually losing. So I got out on the road and I was happy to be at highway speed. And then after a few miles, it noticeably started to slow down as I was entering the valley. And then from there, it just kept getting worse, which is understandable. There's millions of people living in the area and the roads are crowded. Waze told me to get off the freeway. And by this point, I'd already been driving almost an hour. So previously when I did ride share, I would take rides down in LA quite a bit. So I'm familiar. You wanna be so careful whenever you're turning left. Ideally, you want a protected light, but be it as it may, I wasn't familiar with the area. And so it was taking me through these different tiny streets. At one spot, I noticed this homeless man there and I felt kind of sorry. And then a little bit further down the block, I could see a guy crouching by someone who looked like they were passed out. And I could kind of see, I think he was trying to pull something out of his hand and who knows what that could be. Before long, I turned left and there were other cars going that way. So obviously Waze knows the quickest ways out of there. Unfortunately, um, there was a car broken down and so I kind of wedged my way through there. So all this to say, I'm four miles away from the drop-off location and it's gonna take me 26 minutes. This is after already driving an hour on the freeway, in traffic and on the side roads down there in Los Angeles. I can't say that I was highly motivated to want to accept these kind of orders if I wasn't doing this 100% acceptance rate experiment. It's pretty cool, an airplane just flew over me. So anyway, I digress. I was getting close to the drop off and I sent my message letting them know that I was coming and it was to a business so I thought, oh, I'm bringing it inside. But actually, as it turns out, I think it was really close to the Dodger Stadium. And there were, there were a lot of people dressed up in Dodgers gear. So maybe these signs were something that they were going to bring into the stadium. I don't know. But that didn't alleviate all the traffic. So thankfully, the guy waved and I, of course, asked, what's the name on the order? And sure enough, he said the right name. And it is because he had the description of my car and he could follow me on the app. But obviously, I didn't see the customer on my app. So you always want to clarify with a name to make sure you're not giving away your order to the wrong person. So we made some small talk as he came over and I gave him one box and then he carried the other box over to his car. And then even though I had to use the restroom, I got out of there as quickly as possible. And I knew if it took me an hour and a half to get there, there was no way I was going to risk going back the same direction with all that traffic because by now I think it was almost three o'clock and everybody's trying to get out of LA to go back home. So I took a different Northern route that I knew was faster. There was less traffic. I ended up getting back to the general area in about 40 minutes. So overall, this trip was so long dealing with the traffic. It wasn't fun. 
and I just thought, all right, I'll look at the math later when I see my earnings. And so that's what I've done. So when I closed out the order after delivering it, they did almost give me $2 in extra pay because of the wait time, because of being on the road for so long. So we'll round that up to $38. I drove 35 miles. That works out to $1.08 per mile. And then adjusting for that return trip, we'll just go ahead and say 35 miles as well. So 70 miles, that works out to 54 cents per mile. Now this low pay for that kind of mileage, that totally reminded me of when I did ride share. And obviously I was new to it and inexperienced and 54 cents a mile is horrible. I, through experience, I was able to get that much higher up by taking shorter trips. So for hourly pay, $38, it took me an hour and a half. That works out to $25 an hour. And actually that is decent pay, even in hindsight of dealing with all that miserable traffic. But you also need to account for that time going home. So that was 45 minutes. So when you do the math, $38 total, I ended up earning $16.88 per hour. And again, there is worse pay and it was just one drop off. Maybe it wasn't so bad. So a couple days went by and when I was gathering the information for this video to share with you, a little message popped up saying that a customer tipped me. Oh, this is so good because that was a long time, a lot of driving for $38. The customer tipped me $15. And obviously, does this make even this level of pay worth it? Well, let's figure out the math. So when you add that new pay of $53 going 70 miles, that works out to 76 cents per mile. That's much better than it was before. So obviously the tip was greatly appreciated. So now let's calculate the time. $53 an hour and a half down, that works out to 35.33 per hour. That is really good hourly pay. So when you account for the 45 minutes to get back, 23.45 per hour is what I earned overall. One thing I didn't notice right away when I received the order, but at the bottom it said long trip. And that totally reminded me of doing rideshare at the airport when you take a passenger way out somewhere or in the suburbs to take them to the airport. It would usually say long trip, 45 minutes plus. And that also reminds me when I was at that business, I was asking the guy if they get a lot of these kind of orders to use Uber Eats. And you know, actually I think it's the business setting up these trips on behalf of the customer. And he said, yes, all the time. And this is good information for you as a driver. He said that the Uber drivers are far more reliable and quick to get the order to the customer. And I do wanna mention as well, on Uber's website, they list Courier Express deliveries. And this is a one day delivery within Los Angeles. Please do share in the comments below how many of these kind of package deliveries have you done? And what's the highest paying one that you've gotten so far? After reflecting, dealing, I'm telling you, if you haven't been in Los Angeles traffic, you will be miserable. So knowing that, was it worth it for me to take an order from here in vacation land to go deep down into Los Angeles with all that traffic, the risk of accidents and other safety risks as well? Do you think it's worth it? In hindsight, I would say I'm gonna try not to take these orders because anything going into Los Angeles, you know, I'm not able to do food delivery on my way back home. And so there are dead miles, which you have to consider. If I was doing this full time or just say I had days to spare, maybe I wouldn't care and I could just go on these trips and go wherever Uber takes me. But either way, when it's time to go home, you're either gonna be earning money doing that or you're gonna just rack up miles on your car known as dead miles. In light of my acceptance rate experiment, I'm trying to take every order and then give you proof to see if it's worth it or not. And I know I already shared previous in a video, it's not worth it. But at one point I dropped down to 99%. So I thought, let's get it back to up to 100% and I'll give you the actual number of orders it takes to get to 100%. But I can already assuredly tell you it's not worth the pay and your time to just basically do whatever Uber wants you to do. So don't accept every order, you don't have to. Even today, I ended up doing a tire delivery. It was like almost $11 for 22 miles. <laughs> How is that worth it? 
And then I've been in this area and I took a couple more low paying orders and I'll just say it was a waste of time. But at least I could film here in this nice location with the planes flying over and you can learn some information about that package delivery. And speaking of package deliveries, maybe you're not really sure what they are. The short version is a restaurant has food and we know as a driver we take it to the customer. A package delivery could be any sort of a box or an item obviously from businesses that are reputable because we don't want to be getting into any illegal activity that would be very scary so these kind of package deliveries are worthwhile or are they not in this next video i break down package deliveries and you can really get excited about it like i did so i'll see you there